Today I talk about the change this planet is facing and what can we do by a spiritual awakening. And uh, I will structure this talk along three questions. Where are we? Where we do want to go? And how to reach there? So in the first slide I will be very brief. This is about the sensitive tipping points we have in our climate. On top, you can see the jet streams. These are westerly high-speed winds. They're very fast and they're interacting with our climate. And they have charted, started to change their behavior and their pattern. In red, we can see the cyclic systems. And we can see that the circulation patterns, especially El Nino and the Atlantic circulation, have begun to change. They are already disturbing the Indian monsoon and also the African monsoon, and of course, also our harvest. In blue, we have the ice sheets. They began to melt, and uh, permafrost is thawing, and the Arctic is one of our most powerful climate regulators. In green, we have the biosphere, and uh, you can see that the reefs are disappearing, and also our forests are on fire. In December 2018, at the opening of the climate conference, Sir, James, uh, Sir David Attenborough said that the end and the collapse of our natural world is at the horizon. This is a very grim outlook, and we are facing an accelerating climate change, and some scientists, they say, we may be too late to repair it. This crisis is an existential one and we face our mortality, our own mortality, but we face also the mortality as human race. And this is a big challenge for us, but challenges also bring always the opportunity to rise and to change and do better. So, the climate outlook is pretty grim, and uh, it's a tough outlook, and we have to change the concept and the outlook and the narrative, because in positivity, there's a lot of power, and it's much more healthier too. So, i like to come to the second question, where we would like to go. And i like you all to dream a little bit and think for a moment how a world actually looks like, how a world you are dreaming, what are the attributes in such a world, and what are you actually doing there. Just let's take a moment and think about how such a world would look like. All right, let us have a closer look, and I hope something beautiful came up in your mind. We all like a good climate, a just world, a peaceful world, and a beautiful world. I'm sure you all agree on that. Um, and we all would like to live in harmony with nature. And uh, I hope there will be maybe no internet in such a world and maybe no mobile phones and we enjoy the real world as it is and don't communicate as nowadays through the internet with other people, but we meet them and we really talk to them. That would be really great, such a world. Actually, this idea of an utopia, of a better world, is not really new. 35 years ago, I came first to India and I was introduced to the concept of the cycle of time. We are, it's a very ancient concept, and we are actually descending from, originating from a Satyuga, a golden age, and we are descending slowly into a Kali Yuga, which is an imperfect world. And in this situation, we can see that in the Greek mythology, this is reflected in the idea of the golden, the silver, the, and the copper, and the iron age. In Christianity, we can see that in the idea of hell and paradise. So this is a very, very powerful old idea. It's almost like an archetype of humanity, and you will find it in many, many literature, in many, many pieces of arts. You will find these symbols and these arts. The big question now, is this a myth, or do we really have a chance to go there? What do you think? Is this a myth, or we really can change the world? Is a big question. So we have to come now to the third question, and this is by far as can be imagined the most tricky one. We have to 
raise our awareness and our consciousness and we have to drastically change our lifestyle. We're all aware about this. We have to reduce our carbon footprint. We all know about that also. I reduce already my flights and uh, travel more with ship and train. And we have to use also more renewable energies. This is quite, quite clear. And we have to do that very, very fast. But we also have to become a healer. A healer of ourselves, but also a healer of others. So let us have a bit more closer look into the practical aspects. And you can see that we all have to reduce our carbon footprint approximately by 70%. A normal European is producing 10 to 20 tons of carbon emission every year. If you, for example, live car-free, you save 2.5 tons per year. If you avoid a transatlantic flight, you save one and a half tons per year. And uh, quite interestingly, a latest study by Oxford University, which was just published last year, was very, very clearly a vegan or plant-based diet is the biggest, is the single biggest contribution you can make towards the climate. So I just have a short question. Who is a vegetarian here? Okay. And who is a vegan? All right, the vegans get the gold medal. Congratulations. <laughs> I'm a semi-vegan, so I'm in the process. So, we also have to switch rapidly to renewable energies. This is very, very important. They are even cheaper, meanwhile, than conventional energy. So, um, we can also look into the four R's. Rethink before you act. Very, very important. Reduce your consumption, recycle as much as possible, and refuse. Refuse to follow all fashion trends. Very, very simple, the four R's. They will help you to make better decisions. I advise since 25 years a spiritual organization in India, and uh, here you can see a picture of a large solar cooker which produces low-pressure steam, and we cook 30,000 meals per day. This works perfect since 20 years, and is a very, very fine example the, of the technology we actually have to use. Here you can see a 50 kilowatt photovoltaic system, and we have 5,000 meditation centers in India, and 400 of them run on photovoltaic battery systems. Many are using hot water systems, and we are also promoting solar lanterns and solar cooking boxes. Very, very valuable in India, because we have a lot of power cuts and a lot of problems there. In 2018, we designed a one megawatt solar thermal power station with financial help from the German and the Indian government. And the speciality of this project is that we're featuring thermal storage. And you might know that thermal storage is very, very important to bring this transition to clean technology because we have to store the energy overnight. This is very, very important. And that's why we got this funding. And you can see on the right side, we added one megawatt of photovoltaic. And this project is running very, very nice. Now also a word to a leadership. This is my boss. Her name is Dadi Janki. She's 103 years old. And she is a beacon of inspiration, still traveling, still giving lectures. And she's really my daddy, my senior sister. And she's my grandmother who looks after me. Very, very nice relation I have with her. I know her since almost 36 years. And uh, quite interestingly, these daddies have wholeheartedly supported the use of renewable energies right from the beginning. They always said, go ahead, go ahead, go ahead. And um, my experience tells me if we would have more women in leading positions, we probably would have less problems in this world. And I hope you all agree with that. Here in Sweden, you have Greta Thunberg. She's a hero. She's also very courageous. So now the big question is and brings us to the last point, how we can bring, heal ourselves and how we can heal the world. And here we deal with psychology. Actually, what happened is as youngsters, we create our habits and we follow these habits throughout our adult life. And these habits are stored in our subconscious and it's very, very tricky actually to change. There's a bad news when you reach the age of 25, your neuronal plasticity of your brain is decreasing and the ability to think outside of the box is diminishing. This is why it is so difficult to change. This is why so many people talk about change, but so few are really able to change because we deal with our subconscious. Luckily, 
there is a ancient and proven method which has withstood the test of time. This is yoga or meditation. Yoga or meditation comes from the Sanskrit word and means connection or union with the divine for self-enlightenment. Science meanwhile agrees that there's a lot of benefit in meditation for the self, but also for the society. It improves health, boosts my thinking, my thought capacity, increases my social capacity, and so on. A lot of benefits when you meditate. But there's even more to that. No, I'm too fast. There's even more to that. Spirituality also tells us a profound connection between our inner and our outer world. What I think on the inside is reflected to the outside. And if we look in the world of quantum physics, it gets even more interesting. This is a very famous double slit experiment, which has been carried out already 50, 60 years ago. And when I observe the experiment, light behaves like a particle. If I shift my attention towards you, light behaves like a wave and vice versa. This is very, very interesting. And um, the physicist Pascal Jordan, he worked with Niels Bohr in the 1920s in Copenhagen. He said, we ourselves produce the result of the measurement through our observation. Isn't that interesting? We ourselves are connected to the result of the measurement. This is very, very interesting. This is called the power of our thoughts. So, what you think matters. That's very interesting, what you think matters. There's a double meaning in this word. Interestingly, all spiritual uh, traditions in the world, they attribute the mind, the ability to influence and change reality. I actively can change my thoughts and emotions, and I have a profound impact into the physical reality. I change my mind, my thoughts, and my emotion, and I have an impact in reality. I can change, this will change completely my perspective. I heal myself from all traumatas and losses of fear, anger, through the power of meditation and become a powerful change maker. Yoga is a method to bring up our real full potential. So this was a lot of information for the intellect, but the heart has to have also a good experience. And I would like to do an experiment with you, a short guided meditation with some positive affirmations. So we have also a practical experience. I hope you're all right with that. Is it okay to do a short meditation? Wonderful. So let us all sit straight and relax ourselves. Breathe deeply into our stomach and relax our shoulders and relax our mind. Forget about the past and forget about the future. I am in the present. I'm connecting now to the divine light. I experience silence and peace in my mind. I now change my focus towards my friends and my relatives and I send them my love and my peace. I now focus towards the animals, all the animals on this planet. I send to all the animals my love and my peace. I now focus towards the earth, our planet, towards the sky, the ocean, and I send to planet Earth my thanks and my gratitude and my love. 
I visualize to hold the planet in my hands very gently and I give peace and love to the whole planet and slowly I change the planet into a world of happiness, justice, peace and beauty. I hold this picture in my mind. I make it very firm. This is the world I would like to go. And this is the world as it would like to see it. I slowly come back into this room and open my eyes. So, thank you very much for joining in this meditation. I hope you all felt a bit the change in atmosphere we created. I heal myself, I heal my heart, and I heal the world. We are all aware that we are in an urgent situation of climate change. The challenge is our chance to raise and do better. Yoga and meditation is a powerful tool to change myself, raise my awareness and become aware that I'm a change maker and can bring change. I have the power to influence this world. I have to change myself. Let me close with a deep spiritual insight. When I change myself, I will change the world. Thank you very much. <laughs>